How can we increase the quality of our life? There is a key ingredient that we will share with you on today's Reflections of Hope episode with Taj Paklov. We will also have a devotional thought by Pastor Mark Finley, health news and more. Stay with us. Happy Friday and welcome to Wake Up With Hope. You know, good morning. Every morning is a wonderful day and a wonderful opportunity to share the love of Jesus with someone. And we are here to share that joy with you today. It sure is. And we are joyful because this morning, as we work our way into the weekend, we get to do it with you right here watching Wake Up With Hope. That's right. And today is National Urban Beekeeping Day. That is really cool. Or National Hobby Beekeeping Day. You know, it's a day set aside to celebrate the practice of keeping bee colonies in urban areas. Mm. You know, while beekeeping in urban areas used to be prohibited, it is now allowed and in fact, it's encouraged. So if you've ever thought about keeping bees, but were hesitant because you don't live in the country, today is the day to look into keeping urban bee colonies. You can also look for bee farms in your area to visit and support a bee farmer. We're talking about support, God promises to be our support as we lean on Him. In His arms, we're safe. We can trust Him. So let's begin our program now by taking a look back at what took place on this day in history. On this day in history, in the year 1799, during Napoleon Bonaparte's Egyptian campaign, a French soldier stumbled upon a black basalt slab inscribed with ancient writing near Rosetta, approximately 35 miles east of Alexandria. This irregularly shaped stone contained fragments of text in three scripts, Greek, Egyptian hieroglyphics, and Egyptian demotic. The discovery of the Rosetta Stone proved pivotal in deciphering hieroglyphics, a language that had been dormant for nearly 2,000 years. With its inscriptions translated, the mysteries of ancient Egyptian language and culture were unveiled to scientists in unprecedented ways. And friend, did you know that the Bible also has its own secret code? It's true. Have you ever heard about the scary sounding beast in the book of Revelation or the mysterious statues and visions in the book of Daniel? Well, the amazing thing is that God didn't intend to keep secrets. Rather, the Bible actually defines itself. It explains itself. And God wants us to know these things and these mysteries and what they all mean. Mm -hmm. And we want to encourage you to dig deep into the Word of God and discover the amazing treasures found there. And we can help you get started. Just go to hope.study to start unlocking Bible gems that are sure to make a positive impact in your life. Wonderful idea. We're going to do that for sure. Well, it's time for health news as Dr. Nerida McKibben from Go Healthy for Good shares with us now. In the headlines today, dairy's linked to cancer, early screening for colorectal cancer deaths, and exercise affects dietary choice. Consumption of dairy products increases the risk of prostate cancer and breast cancer according to findings from the Adventist Health Study 2. Almost 53,000 women were followed for eight years, during which over 1,000 cases of breast cancer were diagnosed. No clear associations were found with soy intake. When it came to dairy, however, those in the top 10% of dairy intake had a 50% higher risk for breast cancer than those in the bottom 10%. It made no difference whether the dairy was full fat, reduced fat, was cheese or yogurt, and the association remained the same. For the average dairy milk consumer, if cow's milk was replaced by soy milk, there would be a 32% lower risk for breast cancer. The Loma Linda-based researchers also followed over 28,000 men for eight years, during which time 1,200 cases of prostate cancer were diagnosed. Those with the highest consumption of dairy were 27% more likely to get prostate cancer than those with the lowest consumption, and 62% more likely than those who never used dairy. The increase in risk occurred at relatively low doses. After skin cancer, 
Prostate cancer is the most common cancer in men and breast cancer is the most common cancer in women. So the standard advice about drinking milk every day needs to be adjusted in light of these findings. Nobody wants to think about colorectal cancer, but the American Cancer Association reports it is the third leading cause of cancer deaths in the United States, and early onset colorectal cancer cases are increasing. However, researchers at the Massachusetts General Hospital have done a study that found initiating colorectal screening in women at 45 years of age instead of 50 may reduce the risk of developing colorectal cancer by 50 to 60%. They believe it's likely to have the same improvement for men. Screening in the US is most often done with colonoscopy when precancerous polyps can also be removed and tested. So don't postpone your colonoscopy. Intense exercise may increase the effectiveness of your diet, according to a study published in the journal Obesity. Researchers demonstrated this effect by studying rats. The experiment was designed to test their resistance to the phenomenon known as incubation of craving, meaning that the longer you go without something, the harder it is to resist the temptation. The rats used in the experiment were given a lever, and once it pressed, it lit up and played a tone before dispensing a high-fat pellet. Researchers found that rats in a group that engaged in high-level exercise were significantly better at resisting the urge to push the button. Study authors suggest that an important part of maintaining a diet is having the ability to say no. I may be craving it, but I'm going to abstain. Exercise could be beneficial physically for weight loss and psychologically to gain control over cravings of unhealthy foods. It may even explain why diets are so much more effective when paired with vigorous exercise. I'm Dr. Nerida McKibben and that's today's health news. How can we increase our quality of life in a world that is constantly on the grind? Let's watch today's Reflections of Hope episode as Taj Paklov reveals the secret to increasing our quality of life. miles away from the nearest continent. There's a lazy laid-back land where the days are long and time slows down. Just like a tired sea turtle resting on a white Why sandy beach. A place where the minutes feel like hours and the hours can feel like days. A relaxing respite where you can pause from the hustle and bustle of life and just be in the moment. The locals call it Fiji time. It simply means that nothing happens in a hurry and that whatever is supposed to happen will eventually happen. So relax and enjoy the wait. But it's more than just the way the locals view time. It's the way they do life. To be honest, even though I grew up on an island, many times I find it difficult to slow down. There's just so much to do and so little time in which to do it. And I know that many task-oriented people like me can relate. But once you've experienced Fiji or island time for yourself, you begin to realize that you've been missing out on something so essential in life. Because the reality is that the quality of your life increases in proportion to your quality of rest. Turn around and fight back today. We call for peace. We could stop the fighting. Today we live in a world full of appointments, schedules, deadlines, and cutoff dates. Life is crowded with so much activity, assignments, and engagements. There are so many things fighting for our attention and pulling us in so many different directions. We live in a task-oriented world that seems to be more concerned with production rather than people. And in this fast-paced society, filled with sound bites and flashing lights, sometimes we find it hard to even breathe. It's so easy to get caught up in trying to make a living that we never really live. Many people come to the end of their lives filled with regret, realizing that their years have been consumed with things that don't really matter. There are few things worse than coming to the end of your days, wishing you had more time to live in the moment. But here's the good news. In this world that is constantly on the grind, God is offering to us Fiji time. Time to trade in the mess of our stress for the best of God's rest. Time to decompress from the pressures of life. Time to enjoy this precious gift of God called the present. To be in the here and in the now. To live in the moment. 
And while it is true that in the light of the last days, we're to live with a sense of urgency, it is also true that God is calling us to be still and to know that He is God. So much closer, closer than it seems. You see, we are called human beings, not human doings. And most people get so caught up in constantly doing that they forget to simply be. Friends, if the enemy cannot make you bad, he will make you busy. He will crowd your life with so much clutter that you will have no time to spend with the one who inhabits eternity. And without him, life is a never-ending pursuit of happiness that will eventually lead to devastation, disappointment, and death. And so, are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Are you overwhelmed by the stresses of life? Do you feel yourself drowning in a sea of activity? Burdened in a beehive of busyness? Wrapped up in a web of weariness? Well, if so, the God of rest says to you today, Come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. For in returning and in rest you shall be saved. In quietness and confidence, you shall find your strength. And as we come to lay down our burdens at the feet of Jesus and learn to live more of our lives on Fiji time, the God of peace shall give us rest for the rest of our journey. Rest not only for time, but for all eternity. Well, friends, we have to take a short break, but when we return, we're going to have music. And don't forget to visit our website at hopetv.org slash wake up to look back at recent episodes and see what else we have going on right here at Hope Channel. And check out our YouTube channel, Wake Up With Hope, to subscribe and keep up with us there. Wake Up With Hope, we'll be right back. Throughout the Bible, we find a host of promises that God has left for you and me. His promises are sure and they cannot fail. You know, music is a powerful way to remember His promises. And today we have inspiring music to share with you as we dwell on the goodness of God. Tender love of God for 
of God Hands of all the reeling spheres Will wipe away your tears He who makes all things new Will do the same for you He is faithful, good and true And His promise to Stay with us. After the break, Pastor Mark Finley joins us to share a moving devotional, Don't Go Anywhere. Welcome back to Wake Up With Hope. Thank you for staying with us this Friday morning. It's now time for a devotional thought. This morning, it will be brought to us by Pastor Mark Finley. Proverbs shoots an arrow from the Lord's quiver directly into the target of our hearts. When you read Proverbs, you are moved by its straightforward teaching and its wise counsel. Here in Proverbs 20, verse 23, Solomon gives us an appeal to honesty. He says, diverse weights are an abomination to the Lord and a false balance is not good. What's that talking about? Well, let's go back to the Middle East again. Let's suppose that I'm going to buy a very precious spice, but I need to, but the seller of that spice will need to weigh it out. So you have these balance scales. He puts weights on one side. Let's suppose he puts 12 ounces on this side. Then he's supposed to put 12 ounces of spice on this side so they're even. But what if the weights on this side are not 12 ounces, but what if they're 10 ounces? But he tells me they're 12. So he saves on the precious spice two ounces each time to make a profit. So the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 20, diverse weights are an abomination to the Lord. A false balance is not good. Proverbs appeals for honesty and integrity in all that we do. The story of Joe, Captain Joseph Bates is the story of a man that had a, amazing honesty, amazing integrity. God longs for us to live with integrity, longs for us to live with honesty. Um, Joseph Bates had sold on one occasion quite a, a lengthy, car, quite a bit of cargo down in the Caribbean when he was traveling in the Caribbean. And, he, he sold this cargo to a tribal chief there. Bates left in the boat to travel back home, and he recognized that the tribal chief had overpaid him. Bates had spent many, many years in the sea as a sea captain. So what was he to do? He recognizes that he's been overpaid, He's sailing away. This is in the 19th century. And he decides to turn the boat back, to go the boat around, to go back to pay this man's uh, fee back to him. And the chief is just amazed. This is why Joseph Bates established so many positive relationships every place he went. 
because Joseph Bates, one of the early Seventh-day Adventist leaders, was a man of integrity. He was a man of honesty. He was a man that paid debts on his ships. He paid his crew a uh, just wage. On one occasion, Joseph Bates had a dream, and he dreamed that God wanted him to go to Battle Creek, Michigan. John F. Loughborough, another Adventist pioneer, tells the account. He says that Joseph Bates has this strong impression from a dream. It prompts him to change his travel plans and uh, to go to Battle Creek in 1852. Now, there were no known Adventists that were going to live there. So Joseph Bates comes to inquire of the postmaster. As he comes to the postmaster, he says to the postmaster, who is the most honest man in the, this town, the man that has most integrity? The postmaster says to Joseph Bates, well, I can tell you the man. It's uh, David Hewitt. And so Joseph Bates goes to the home of David Hewitt early in the morning, knocks on the door. Mr. Hewitt, yes, I understand that you are the most honest man in town. Hewitt says, well, some people might say that. And he said, I have something I want to share with you. Can I come into your home and study the Bible? So they study together. And uh, they study on the Bible Sabbath. Bates had accepted the Sabbath. And the Hewitts accepted after one day of Bible study. They study the prophecies of Daniel, the prophecies of Revelation. And Hewitt invites his neighbors to come in. And uh, this small band of believers found at that place uh, in Battle Creek began to meet in Hewitt's home. And it was there in 1853 that two more founders of the Adventist Church, James and Ellen White, along with Loughborough, meet with these believers in their first visit to Battle Creek. Uh, the arrival of these workers just thrilled, just absolutely thrilled this, these new early Adventists there. But what was it? that caused Joseph Bates to go looking for David Hewitt. It was Bates' own honesty. It was Bates' own integrity. It was the fact that Joseph Bates was a man of character, and he wanted to find somebody else that was a person of character that he could witness to. This idea of honesty, this idea of integrity, this idea of character, is found here in the book of Proverbs where it says, diverse weights are an abomination to the Lord, a false balance is not good. In other words, live a life of honesty, live a life of integrity, live a life in which your character is the most important thing in your life. You know, my father taught me this from a very, very young age. One day, dad and I were walking home from church. By this time, I was about 17, I had become a Seventh-day Adventist. And as we were walking home from church that particular day, it was a fall day in New England where I lived, was born and brought up in the state of Connecticut. The leaves had fallen off the tree, so quite a few leaves on the sidewalk. And Dad kicked a few leaves and he saw an envelope there. Now, we didn't have a lot of money in those days at all. And Dad saw that envelope, he picked it up, and as he looked at that envelope, there was maybe $150 or $160 in, in cash in the envelope. Dad looked and he knew immediately what had happened. On Friday in our town, in the mills, we had a mill town. On Friday in those towns, people got paid. And Dad knew somebody had gotten paid. No name on the envelope at all. No way of identifying it. And I'm looking at this money. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 80, 90, 100 dollars, 110, 20, 30, 150 dollars? And I knew that dad was working a couple jobs. I knew that we didn't have much money. And I thought, man, this is wonderful. And dad looks at me and said, you know, Mark, somebody lost this money. And um, I know that they're going to be really sad. We've got to find that person. So dad goes down to the police station. He said, look, I found this envelope filled with money. And uh, ours was a very close town, a small community. And he said, I'm going to leave this envelope here. Dad left it there. And then we discovered that the person found that they had lost the money. They went to the police and the police gave them back the money. But here's the end of that story. Years later, 30 years later, I'm the speaker of It Is Written Television. 
people see my name, Mark Finley, and they say, wait a minute, there was a Finley that the police said turned in this money. We didn't know where he lived. They wouldn't give us his address because it was confidential. I wonder if this Mark Finley has anything to do with this James Finley who turned in the money. And so I get a, we get a call at It Is Written Television. 30 years later, Pastor Mark, we're watching you on television. And was it your father that turned in the money? Indeed it was. And I think of Psalm 66, verse 2 and 3, sing out honor to the name of God. This couple had a deeper relationship with Jesus because they made that linkage of what dad did those years before. Honesty, integrity makes a major difference. Walk into your day today determined by the grace of God to live an integrity life, a life filled with integrity. Thank you, Pastor Mark. That was a very hopeful message. And friends, thank you for watching Wake Up With Hope. And if you'd like to learn more about our program or rewatch a segment during the weekend or share our program with a friend, visit us at hopetv.org slash wakeup. And we look forward to starting the week together. So don't forget to join us Monday morning at 7 a.m. Our friends from Voice of Prophecy will be sharing a devotional thought and we'll have so much more you don't want to miss. And if you enjoyed today's devotional thought and would like to learn more, visit at hope.study to receive your free Bible study guides. And of course, we can't leave without sharing the Bible promise with you. And today's promise says, I tell you the truth, those who listen to my message and believe in God who sent me have eternal life. They will never be condemned for their sins, but they have already passed from death into life. John 5, 24. Mm, what a beautiful promise. You know, friend, as we follow Jesus and we accept him and surrender all to him, we are covered in his righteousness and we have the assurance of eternal life. Amen. We are ready to start our weekend now, friends. We pray that you will take these reminders of God's love with you into your day. And we truly pray that you will have a wonderful weekend and we can't wait to see you on Monday morning. Let's pray together. Oh Lord, into our hearts, come into our hearts, Lord Jesus, and come in today and come in to stay. Lord, you have met with us today through the program. We, our hearts are just full of hope and peace and joy, and we give you thanks. And we pray that as we continue with this day, that you would give us opportunities to share that hope with others. Uh, so many people need the hope that we have in Christ. And we pray that you would make us your instruments today to share good news. And we thank you for answering our prayer in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>